those of us who dissolved ourselves and completely lost ourselves in the process without trying to control it just went with the flow and devoted ourselves to this particular piece of art we were creating came out of the class feeling a lot more relaxed and happy and joyful versus those who were trying to control the lines and get things precise who are more focused on the knowledge and the technique part of things board drawings were beautiful but we got a better result out of things in the sense of being joyful hello 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 Welcome back to the Feel Good Factor. I'm Susmita Vignesaurus and I'm so glad you could join me here today. Hey hey hey. I'm back home in Bangalore. <laughs> Yay! I also do miss whatever I did throughout my trip and it was so wonderful. For those of you who didn't listen to the past couple of episodes I shared with everyone here that I wasn't in town and as soon as I'm back in town I'm going to tell you where I was. So I was in Dharamkot in Himachal Pradesh. It's a beautiful place way up in the mountains. Getting there was a bit haragging but finally when I did get there I loved loved my whole vacation it was a semi solo trip and uh, had a lovely time meeting people eating walking exploring and of course resting a lot in my room because it rained quite a bit so i spent lots of time cozily tucked in bed and just you know looking out the window at the beautiful scenery <laughs> so it was a very very beautiful uh, trip So originally this episode was supposed to be all about my trip and the things I learned from it because solo trips are uh, always involve many many interesting life lessons especially for somebody who likes to ponder and contemplate and introspect and all that many things uh, reveal themselves especially when you're traveling solo or, or mostly solo so I wanted to share uh, all the things I learned you know or or most of the things I learned but today i was attending my uh, weekly class it's a spiritual class that i've been uh, doing for uh, more than a year now i think for a couple of years nearly now and it's been a really nice experience my teacher is really amazing she always has some great insights through all the classes but sometimes the insights the quotes are so strong that it just hits you bam and today she said something like that and i'm like you know what that's what i'm going to talk about in the on the podcast today not anything else the trip uh, details can wait a while so here's what she said we were closing up class almost and at that particular point of time we were talking about uh, the different uh, ways of connecting to the divine energy to god to cosmic whatever you'd like to call it different ways people do that and then the question came to the ego the i that we always um, associate ourselves with and especially the ego that uh, gets in the way of uh, doing anything uh, good in life the, the ego that makes us uh, doubt or uh, be arrogant or where the lower emotions it puts in the way like anger and pride and all those things so she said when you are on the path of knowledge you can crush the ego but when you are in the path of devotion you can melt the ego and i was like mind blown because that actually explains a lot about uh, myself about people around me about the way we approach things now all of us want to be better people we all have that intention and our journey is always reaching towards our higher self 
trying to bring out that divine nature from within us in some way or another uh, it could be in some simple acts of kindness or compassion or love or care or saying some nice words to people whatever it is right we we all like to reach into this divine nature within us and bring it out into the world and when we do connect to our higher selves like this we always feel rewarded there's always this nice feeling that uh, comes over us and to reach it again and again the more we get into this path of uh, being kind compassionate loving all these things now there are different ways to reach your uh, divine nature different ways to become a better person a bringer of light in this world two of those multiple ways are uh, one is of knowledge and logic and uh, you know understanding breaking things down and understanding and then going forward towards becoming better versions of ourselves or, or better people for the world and the other is surrender and devotion and just giving ourselves up entirely into whatever it is we are doing into any action that we take in life and just allowing ourselves to flow this is not applicable only to spirituality this is actually applicable to every part of our life in the way we run a business in the way we run a household or our family in the way we approach a creative project these two are common paths that people take sometimes they overlap but often people have a tendency towards either this or that either approaching something through the path of knowledge and logic and you know breaking things down and understanding or just going with the flow and surrendering and devoting yourself to it and feeling it you know being present in the moment there is no right or wrong here both paths are effective because both of them take you to the divine or to the best possible outcome even if it's not spirituality both of them take you towards the best possible outcome so for example i'll tell you on my trip i went and did a sketching class so i can give you an example from the sketching class the teacher taught us how to draw an eye using various um, charcoal powders and pencils and stuff like that some different kinds of erasers and stuff and it was so interesting the whole experience you can have zero talent zero knowledge about this particular thing and yet you come out of that class having created this gorgeous looking eye like at the end of the class i looked at the one i had created and i'm like uh, what did i just draw that <laughs> i couldn't believe it myself so the teacher is that good that very good all the students in the class regardless of you know whatever experience or lack of experience uh, we've had everyone ended up creating something beautiful each person's eye had a a realistic look to it and also you know their love and their own unique uh, hand was seen in it you can say in a class like that there are two components one is you need to learn the techniques this is how you do things this is how you use this tool this is how you use the other tool and stuff like that and the other is going with the flow once you learn the technique you kind of let yourself go with the flow so both are there as a part of the class but some students went with the flow a lot more easily than others some students who were more in terms of uh, you know the path of knowledge and logic they wanted to go deeper into the technique and get the technique right and let it be precise like this and let me draw the line this way and curves that way and uh, those of us who wanted to go with the flow and uh, believe me i was one of those because i'm not a very precision work kind of a person 
we just learned the techniques. We're like, okay, this is how you use it. This is how you do the lines. And then we surrendered ourselves, gave ourselves entirely to this work of art that we were creating. And we let our hands move and, you know, looked away and then came back. And you could say that the drawing got created through us versus we created it. Now, as I said, all the students' results were great. You know, everything turned out beautiful. And our teacher encourages, uh, after teaching us how to do things in a technical way, the basic techniques, how to sit, how to hold the pen, all these things. After that, he deeply encourages us to go into the flow. He's like, creative flow is important. It's actually a very meditative class. There's music playing in the background softly and then Every 15-20 minutes, it's a three-hour session, so every 15-20 minutes, he was like, okay, get up, go for a walk, take a very short five-minute break and come back. You'll come back with fresh eyes when you look at it. So he encouraged all of that. So basically, as a part of the process, you're letting go of your ego. You're not allowing other things to come in the way. You're trying not to allow the I to come in there. And you're connecting to the work that you're doing. Whether you're connecting deeply to the right techniques and the way to flick your hand and the lines and stuff. Or if you're like, okay, the lines will flow and I'll move my hand accordingly. Either way, you're letting go of your ego. But the ones who are doing it with giving more importance to the techniques and the precision and uh, trying to control things, right? Like to get it just right. Like, okay, this is the image that was uh, shared with us. Now our sketch has to come as close to the image as possible. That is the, you know, the logic, knowledge and technique people. All of us were giving an, an image, a photograph to copy from. And those of us who looked at the image and said that, okay, so this is a reference and then I'm going to flow and then whatever comes, great. It doesn't have to precisely match. We were the uh, surrender and uh, devotion people, you know, we really flowed with the uh, work that we were doing. And like I said, all the drawings came out beautiful, but the big difference those of us who dissolved ourselves and completely lost ourselves in the process without trying to control it, just went with the flow and devoted ourselves to this particular piece of art we were creating, came out of the class feeling a lot more relaxed and happy and joyful Versus those who are trying to control the lines and get things precise, who are more focused on the knowledge and the technique part of things. Both drawings were beautiful, but we got a better result out of things in the sense of being joyful. And their result was, of course, uh, better knowledge, right? Better precision. Those are nothing to sniff about. But what would you want? Would you want at the end of a process of creation, at the end of a, a spiritual practice or a spiritual journey, at the end of your cooking, at the end of the day while you're wrapping up your house or when you're closing up your work for the day, how would you like to feel? Would you like to feel like, okay, I know more, I learned more, I'm, I am a better equipped person now. All that, but also stressed and anxious. and Because you had to work hard to crush that ego, right? You had to work against your ego. Or would you like to feel, I'm so relaxed, I'm fulfilled, my work is done for the day, I'm chilled out now, it's all over. And big smile naturally coming onto your face like, ah, this is good. So your ego there was dissolved. You lost yourself in your work. It's up to you to choose. It's up to all of us to choose exactly which path we want to take. Both will take you to your highest self. Both will take you uh, towards the divine energy. Whether you believe in spirituality or not, 
a divine energy is something we've all felt it's that feeling of joy and expansion that you get and this uh, feeling of uh, having reached a higher level so both will reach you to a divine energy but do you want a path of learning and improvement and perfection while you go there or do you want a path of uh, joy and surrender and flow while you go there that is totally up to you and of course as listeners of a podcast like this called the feel good factor i am hoping that you prioritize feeling good above all else and choose that path of devotion and surrender because well they're both going to take you to the same goal but when you devote yourself and surrender yourself completely when you let go of your ego and let it dissolve completely instead of fighting against it and judging it and trying to break it and control it you're just going to be feeling so good so much better than a person who's trying to struggle against their ego who's trying to break down their ego in every situation i'm sure you can think of many situations in your life to apply this to and i hope you keep remembering this again and again the path of knowledge and logic helps you crush the ego and through the path of surrender and devotion you can melt the ego remember this all the time no matter what action you take in your life and uh, yeah lean towards my side <laughs> you know the side of surrender and i feel that you are going to be so much more joyful and you are going to go through life with a smile and a light step <laughs> all right i'll be back next week and yes i will be talking about my trip hopefully <laughs> If you enjoyed this episode of the Feel Good Factor, you are going to totally enjoy my free newsletter, The Feel Good Tribe. Go to my website veganosaurus.com, v e g a n o s a u r u s dot com slash newsletter and sign up. Once you sign up, you will get a confirmation email. You have to hit confirm on that email. That's the only way you will be subscribed. If the email isn't in your inbox then it's likely in your spam folder or your promotions folder please check there mark it as not spam and then hit confirm as soon as you've confirmed and you're on the list you're going to get a welcome email go through the email hit reply immediately and tell me all about yourself i am waiting to hear back from you i'm going to send you emails once or twice a month with stories from my life hacks about uh, how to make your life easier some vegan recipes spiritual tips i occasionally even do goddess card uh, or tarot card readings for my newsletter readers it's a mix and match of a whole bunch of feel goodness <laughs> see you on the inside thank you so much for listening to this episode of the feel good factor I'm Susmita Veganosaurus and I'm looking forward to talking to you again very soon. Bye.